Amen. Good morning, church. Amen. Welcome to Mark Faith Fellowship Church. Welcome to Sunday morning. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Are you ready to worship him this morning? Are you, are you, did you leave your house this morning expecting to receive something from God? Amen. So you're at the right place at the right time. We want to welcome you to worship with us. I want you just like I say this all the time. I just want you to just disconnect from anything else, anything that can be a distraction and just focus on getting into his presence right now. In Jesus name, we'll welcome everyone that is watching us online. Feel free to worship, to praise with us. Stand right now wherever you are, put your hands up in Jesus name and I know that the the anointing that it's it's already flowing in this room. It's going to flow into your home, your house, your car, your job, wherever you are right now. So just expect to receive as, as we are receiving in this room as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together like this, everybody. Come on. Da. Da. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Cause failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Say it again. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Everybody, come on. Lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door 
leave you there. He ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Come on, your claps. Yeah, hallelujah. Sing it, man. Our right voice not the end game. The journey's where you are. You never want the perfect. You just want it, my heart. And the story isn't over if the story isn't good. Gotta be good. Failure's never final. Others in the room. Failure's never final when the father's in the room. Come on. Ooh. Shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. See, this is what happens when we are in the Father's house. And this is what Mark Faith Fellowship is all about. Listen to this. Prodigals come home. The helpless find hope right here. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide. Come on. The dead come to life. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. What about miracles? Miracles take place. The cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. In your life today, love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Come on. Ooh, lay your burden down. Let me see you clap your hands. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame. Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house Let me hear you, come on Ooh, lay your burdens down Ooh, you're in the Father's house Every COVID-19 fear, check your fear at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Father's Somebody put your hands together in this place. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. This is the Father's house. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Make yourself at home. This is the Father's house. Hallelujah. Isn't that the best place to be? You're quiet. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church today. Come on, somebody. Come on, let me hear you if you're here. Are you alive in Jesus today? Hallelujah. What do you believe? Let's declare this together. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation Come on church We believe we believe in this broken generation. When all is dark, you help us. There is only one salvation. Say it. We believe. Everybody together now we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe in the We believe that He conquered death. 
We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. And he's coming back again. We believe. Say it. We believe. over yet as you know you you have watched in the last few services that we were repeating the song over and over because we believe this song became an anthem to 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 our church to us in this season uh that doesn't matter what's going on this broken generation everything that it's ugly out there we ha there's only one foundation there's only one salvation which is our faith in the word of god is our faith in our christ is our faith and what Jesus has done for us at the cross. We believe. I don't know about other people, but I can say that this church, we believe. In this church, we believe in the word of God. Amen. And as we are ministering this song and being ministered by this song at home, my wife was inspired to write this another, this, verse. another verse. Watch this. We believe we are protected. Yeah. We believe. Yeah. We believe that God is for us and that we've already won. We believe his shed blood's power, that curse broken on the tree. We believe no weapons prosper and we have the victory. We believe. Yes. Hallelujah. One more time. We believe we are protected. We believe Psalm 91. We believe that God is for us and that we've already won. Yes, we believe his shed blood's power, the curse broken on the tree. We believe no weapons prosper and we have the victory. We believe. Hallelujah. You believe. Come on. Say it. We like believe. You it. Just say we believe. Come on. We believe. Let me hear. I want to hear it loud. We, we believe. believe. Make a personal now and say, I believe. I believe. I'm blessed. I believe. 
Come on, say, I believe. I'm healthy. I believe. I'm prosperous. I believe. I'm protected by a covenant. I believe. No weapon form prosper. I believe. Hallelujah. Come on, Let's say it. Together. I believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your covenant of protection. We believe no weapon prospers. So let's just sing hallelujah. We picked a song so easy to sing. I want you to light this room up with your worship. And you can start by lift up your, yeah. lift, lifting your hands, closing your eyes, because you know this. One big choir. Sing it like this. Come on. Hallelujah. church and hallelujah take this opportunity to lift up the sound hallelujah for the lord god almighty reigns come on lift it up and Take it up. Lift up your hands with me. Come on, and Church, come on, guitar. Holy. Let me hear your church. Come on. Are you Lord God Almighty? And worthy is the Lamb. One more time. Pick it up, here we go. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. You are holy. Say Santo. 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 É o Senhor Deus. É o Senhor Deus. Poderoso. Poderoso. Digno ao Senhor. Digno ao Senhor. Digno ao Senhor. Tu és Santo. 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 É o Senhor Deus. É o Senhor. 
Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Lift it up and say, Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. One more time, say, Holy. Jesus, we honor you with all we have. Receive our praise. Receive our adoration, Father. We are open to receive from you today, Father. Pour your fire, your glory in our lives today supernaturally. We are here for you, Jesus. We are here for you. We speak, Father, supernatural abundance of favor today over your people all over, all over the world, wherever they are right now watching us in this room, Father. Wherever they are, Father, we speak supernatural abundance of favor, Father. Manifestation of your grace, manifestation of your mercy, manifestation, Father, of your glory supernaturally today. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing. We speak miracles, Father. Over the victory box, everybody that is believing for a victory, Father, we speak in the name of Jesus. Victory right now. We agree right now by faith in this atmosphere, Father. In this anointing, Father, we believe for miracles today. We believe and we declare right now. And we receive by faith in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus. I receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. You didn't hear me. God is good. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So good to see so many faces live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know about you, but Jericho walls are quaking, and so am I. All you have to do is just open up to let the Lord minister to you. That's all you have to do. He's always ready, willing, able. Amen? I just want to talk to you briefly about uh, giving today. I want to welcome you warmly here. It's so amazing to be here. God is faithful. This is the beginning of a new season, a new season of prosperity, a new season of miracles. A new season of walking in covenant and seeing everything God's promised come to pass in our lives. I don't know if you believe it, but I do. Hallelujah. God is always about forward. God is always about multiplying. You never hear in the scripture, and God wants to take away from you. You never hear in the scripture, and if you give, I'll just keep it for myself and never give back to you. Amen? Are you with me today? God is always about increase. God is always about multiplying. Turn to Isaiah 55. We'll start with verse 8 real quick. It's great in every version, but today I'm going to read it to you from the common English version. The Lord says, my thoughts and my ways are not like yours. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. Rain and snow fall from the sky. But they don't return without watering the earth that produces seeds to plant and grow again. Excuse me, to plant and grain to eat. That's how it is with my word. My, th- my word doesn't return void. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm quoting it, I'm not reading it. My word doesn't return to me without doing everything I send it to do. That's why I wanted to read this version. Good morning. Tony and Sandra. Amen. So good to see you. <laughs> so my thoughts are not your thoughts. What does that mean? Because when I was a little girl, that meant, oh, you can't touch my thoughts, child. But I've come to learn that God is saying, I want to take you higher. Amen. I want to expand you. Amen. 
I want to talk to you about multiplication, increase. Amen? Amen. You guys need some caffeine today. God is always challenging us. He's always stretching us in every area of our lives to grow and increase. How do you increase your capacity to receive? You increase your capacity to give. Very simple. Give and it shall be given unto you. You plant one seed and multiple seeds come through the plant that it produces. A seed produces a plant, produces fruit and leaves and seeds, and then you have fields of seeds. How many of you want fields of return? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Shall, in the word of God, is a deliberate decision. It's not an option. Are you with me today? I just want to encourage you to sow in faith and reap in faith. It is a good thing to give to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Don't get stuck. If you're worried about what's coming, I got so blessed a few weeks ago by a conversation with somebody who, who professed, I never think about what's coming to me. I never have to. I never worried. I never, ever worried once about God taking care of me because I know his nature. I never worried about my father taking care of me. Never once in my life did I say, I wonder if my father will forgive me. I wonder if my father will feed me. I wonder if my father will protect me from anything. I never once, never once in my life thought that. How do we think about our heavenly father? Because the Bible says in Matthew, if your earthly father can take care of his kid, how much more than your heavenly father? In Luke, hallelujah. Give and it shall be given unto you. The spirit of generosity breeds success in your future. Amen? Amen? So we encourage you to give electronically today. If you want to hand us uh, an offering, we'll receive it. But we encourage you to give it electronically. Just stretch your hand out. Father, I thank you that you give seed to the sower, bread to the eater, that you're faithful to your word. You watch over it to perform it. That every word that comes out of your mouth is faith that produces increase. We sow seed in faith today, expecting results for the kingdom of God and for each individual giver in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. If you believe it, say amen like you mean it. Amen. That's better. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There we go. Amen. Are you happy to be here today? Amen. Amen. Just want to let you guys know in the back that there's three room, three chairs here. No, they're occupied. Oh, Ugo. Okay, Ugo. All right. Or his family. Forgot about that. All right. Are you happy to be here again? Awesome. Awesome. So we're getting started. We're getting started very soon. We don't have to deal with any of this. We are we're using this month as a preparation for the, 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 the real comeback, and we are expecting, I just wanted to let you know, uh, we are expecting to have a full service open to the public, everybody, July, July 5th, July 5th, it'll be the first Sunday of July, and, but we'll not be in this building, we're going to be back at the Bridgewater Marriott, which there is a lot more space, we can spread out more if necessary, we don't have to worry about that. And we don't have to worry about limiting numbers because we, we, don't, we have plenty of room over there. So just hang tight. Those that are watching online, keep on watching. If you want to come to one of the services, let us know because we have to make sure we have a seat saved for you. Because, again, the, the space is limited. But it's temporary. And very soon we're going to be together. July 7th. Isn't it July 5th? I'm pretty sure it's 5th. Yeah. 
And then we're going to, when once we go back, we, we're going to go back to our nor normal routine. Sunday's at the Bridgewater Marriott, and then Thursday's here for our Victory Thursday. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Are you happy that we're getting out of this? Yeah. Are you happy to hear some good news every once in a while now? Tomorrow you can go out to dinner if you want. It's takeout or, or I'm, I'm sorry, it's dine out. Is that what it is? You can eat outside, but you can eat outside of your home. You know, you can, can you know, in this good weather, at least it's a good thing, right? You go by, you can go to Pier Village. At least you have a beautiful view of the beach. Anyway, we're excited that God is, is in control of our lives and the best is here now. I want to encourage you to keep on believing and standing and confessing the word of God for the rest of this year. Don't give up in 2000. Don't give up on 2020 because 2020 didn't give up on you. Neither did God. So keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on expecting. I have said this so many times. God does not need 12 months in a year to make of your year a great year. God does not need that. We planned to have an incredible year if everything goes well. God doesn't need that. God just needs one minute, one favor, one phone call, one letter, one check in the mail can change your whole life around. Come on, somebody. So that's what I'm, I just want to encourage you to keep on believing and keep on standing. Don't give up. Don't change your plans. Look at your vision board and keep on speaking life to it. Keep on, on calling the things that are not as they already are. Amen? Because... If God didn't change, if God didn't say anything, why should we change? Amen? If God didn't change his word, I'm not changing anything that I have put before him because he didn't tell me to change it. Amen? Praise God. I also want to share with you some good news, some of you that probably didn't, didn't hear on Thursday. We are now with a date for our first Service our first program, marked faith program, to be live June 28th, Sunday, June 28th. You will be able to watch us live on Faith Plus. Faith Plus that will be our first show, it's gonna go on on Sunday, live June 28th. You can download, do this, download the app Faith Plus because you're not just gonna get our church, you're gonna get many other. Great men of God there. R uh, Rick Renner, Keith Butler, Billy Brim, uh, Paul Doherty, Kerry Butler. There's so many. There are so many powerful preachers there. And it's going to bless you. It's going to bless your family. You can listen to, to faith messages, good messages every day while you're driving, while you're working. You don't have to be watching. You can just play it and get the audio. And it's going to bless you. And you can go back. You don't have to watch a live. You, all the messages stays on demand, so you can always go back and watch whatever you want. You can pause it, go back later again. You, so it's available on Faith Plus app. It's available on Apple TV. It's a bit available on Roku, if you have Roku, and also Faith Plus, Faith Plus, the website. And very soon, much more. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We're going to reach every available voice possible so we can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to submit our messages to every major broadcast. How are you going to do that, Pastor? By faith. We got here so far by faith. We're not going to stop now. Amen? We got here by faith. One day God asked me this. What did, what did you have to do to get to where you are? I said nothing. He said, so you're gonna have, you don't have to do nothing to get to where I want you to go. He said, just keep on walking with me. Just keep, in, keep on trusting me. Just everything that has, that has happened so far, it's by the grace, by the favor of God, and because we have stand in faith. And, uh, and uh, we have stood in faith, and we're going to continue to do so. We're going to continue to do so. We're not going to stop that. And we're going to use, we're going to call local cables because we want to also reach the people that are local because those can drive to us. And we're going to reach in the international, the countries, so we can also get people saved for the kingdom. This is all about kingdom. This is all about the uh, saving souls. This is not about one man show. This is about all of us preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So can you get excited with me? Because this is good news. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We have a lot of work ahead of us, but God is blessing us with good people 
Jorge has been a great blessing to us, a great gift to this ministry. Bob is incredible help as well. Every time I need something, Bob is only a phone call away. And he always has the answer. I don't know. I don't, maybe the gray hair has something to do with God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because he always knows what to say. Amen. We love them. A great God has given us great people and a, that are a gift to this ministry and many, 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 many others as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? All right. Amen. 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 Open your Bibles with me in Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We're going to start reading. And we're, for now, just one verse. We're going to go to verse 9. Just one verse for now. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Verse 9 from the NIV version says this, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Amen? It's amazing to see a man like Solomon, that wrote amazing books in the Word of God, especially the book of Proverbs. I actually often invite, invite and encourage people to read the book of Proverbs daily because it's so amazing. There's 30 chapters. There's always one chapter for each day of the month. And there's so, many, there's so much wisdom for the, for the everyday life. It's amazing that if you start reading, you're going to see, oh, my God, this is exactly what we need for this day and time. For what we're going, we're going on in the world, how to, how to deal with people, how to deal with our, how to be disciplined and everything and many other things. So he wrote so many great books, especially the book of Proverbs, with so much wisdom, knowledge, and revelation from God. He said something like this. And then, and then later, I'm sorry, he says, he says something like this. There is nothing new under the sun. It's kind of like there's a little bit of a conflict here because the same man that writes so many great things in Proverbs, so many powerful revelation and wisdom and knowledge, later in another book, the same writer, he starts by writing something like this. There's nothing new under the sun. What you saw before, you're going to see it again. What happened before, it's going to happen again. In other words, he's telling us that we, this is the circle of life. So you are supposed, in other words, you're supposed to see the same troubles. Probably going to go away for a while, but then later we'll re revisit you again. Because nothing is new under the sun. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs full of joy, expectation, and revelation. In fact, the Proverbs chapter 4, he says, he says this, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. So powerful. In other words, what he's saying, he, he was saying here, he was saying, do you want to have victory in your life? Then keep the word before your eyes. He's saying, you want to live a successful life? Then keep the word of God before your eyes, in your ears, inside of you. You want healing for your body? So let me give you the medicine. Let me give you the, the prescription for healing. The word of God. It's healing for your body. That's what he says. It's healing for your body. But now in the book of Ecclesiastes, he starts completely different. Look how he starts the book of Ecclesiastes. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. It's weird. There's a difference here. It looks like if you get one book and then you get the other one and you don't know who wrote it, you think it's two different people, two different writers. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. The problem with Solomon is that he got too wise. He got too wise, naturally speaking. He got too smart. Let's put it this way. When you think you know too much, when you think you have seen everything, you have been around the block way too many times, is when you start missing on God. It's when you start missing on the Holy Ghost and you stop believing that there is more for you. 
When you think you know, oh, I've been, I've been around church forever. Oh, I have seen things like this. Oh, no, no, I, these kind of preachers, this kind of program, this kind of, this kind of, this kind of church, this kind of thing, whatever it is, you, there's always that kind of people that said, oh, I've been there, I've done that, I even have a t-shirt made. That's a big problem. Because when you think you know too much, when you think you are full of experience, it's when you stop believing God and you miss the Holy Ghost and you stop believing that God has something new for your life. That God has something greater that you've never seen before. Amen. You start believing Solomon instead of believing God. It's great and it's true that Solomon said what he said. That doesn't mean what he said was right. Come on. How many times you have opened your mouth and you said something that you didn't even believe in? Just because you are overwhelmed by circumstances, depressed, mad, angry, you said things just to vent out, but you knew on the inside that you didn't believe. It's true that you said it. That doesn't mean what you said is true. Come on, talk to me. The moment you take your eyes off the word of God is the moment you stop believing God for greater things for your future. And then you go back and you start talking like you, you start talking like Solomon, saying things like Solomon. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. I've seen everything. The moment you take your eyes off the word, the moment you take your eyes off Jesus, the moment you take your eyes off the cross, you start missing God. Tell your neighbor this, don't limit God because he has more for you. Say this one more time, don't limit God because he has more for you. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, says this from the NIV version. Brothers and sisters, look what Paul is saying. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have take hold of it. But one thing I do, say this with me, one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal, the mark, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So powerful, so powerful. Brothers and sisters, I don't consider to have it all together. I don't consider myself to have yet take hold of it. But I do one thing. There's one thing that I know. I probably miss on a lot of other things, but there's one thing I don't. One thing I do. I forget the past. I forget what's behind. And I press forward. I press on toward the mark. Toward the mark. To win the prize. Toward the mark to win the prize for which God has called me, heaven word in Christ Jesus. Paul starts this chapter telling us how he had many reasons, how he had many reasons to have confidence in himself, to have confidence in the flesh. In other words, he, he was saying, I can be righteous by my own effort. I can be righteous by my own effort. In fact, Paul was a master of the law. Paul was a master of the law. He said in verse 4, if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for righteousness based on the law, faultless. So you think if anybody thinks that they, they, they are more holy than I am, they can get things done uh, uh, better than I can, they're wrong. I can do better than them. So if Paul was talking about self-effort, righteous by your own works, he could do that. Because he did everything right according to the word. He did everything right according to the law. Because even though when he was saw, he thought he was doing the right thing. He thought he was doing the right thing. He thought he was doing, he was stopping those that came to destroy the, 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 the real gospel. And yet was the, the five books of Moses. That was the real gospel to them. These people are distorting the word. So I'm going to stop them. So he thought he was doing the right thing until he had the revelation that he was actually doing the opposite. 
and Saul became Paul. But then he says again in verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have it all together, to take hold of it. I don't consider myself, even though I am who I am, I don't consider myself to have it all together. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what's ahead. One thing I do. Say this with me. One thing I do. Watch what I'm going to tell you now. You cannot get into the new. You cannot get into the new with the same old mindset. Come on, somebody. Stick here with me. You cannot get into the new with the same old thinking. The same old habits, the same old mindset. You have to forget what's behind, and I don't even care if what was behind, what is behind was good or bad. Come on, somebody. You have to forget what is behind. Paul didn't say, I forget what's behind or what what was bad behind. I forget what was hurtful behind. I forget what's traumatic behind. He said, I forget what's behind. I forget what's behind. So like I said, you cannot get into the new. Have a new mindset with the same old thinking. You cannot get into a new season trying to drag the problems of the last season. Come on, somebody. You cannot get into a new year with the same habits of the bad year. You want different results? Change what you're doing. A lot of people, they want things to change in their lives, but they keep doing the same thing. They keep, making on same, they keep on making the same decisions. They keep on being uncommitted. They keep on being uh, anything but faithful to the word of God. What God tells you to do, do, be doers of the word, not triers, not listeners only, but doers of the word. So when you don't do that, don't expect to have different results. You want lemon, so you have to sow seeds of lemon. Don't sow seeds of orange expecting to get lemon because they look alike. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. You can't. So you cannot get into the new carrying the old. He said you have to forget what's behind, and I don't even care if it was good or if it was bad. Because look what the Bible says. Look what the Bible says. And let me just go back to the beginning and show you how Solomon said what he said was true. But that doesn't mean he was right. Can I show that to you right now? In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, we see God talking, talking through the prophet Isaiah to us. Verse 18, verse 19 from the NIV version, he says this. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. You see, God is telling us the same thing that Paul is saying he does. One thing I do, I forget what's behind. Isaiah is telling us, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Again, he's not telling us if it was bad. He's talking about the past period. It doesn't matter if it was good. It doesn't matter if it was bad. Let me just tell you something. Watch this. This is very powerful. Do not let your past experiences stop you from believing God for your future blessings. That's why it's so important that we forget the past. I'm going to read verse 19, but before I do that, I want to tell you this. It's extremely important that we forget the past, that we, we just break the, the tie, the string that it's holding us back to the past. I don't care what it is. Because sometimes people, they let their bad experience of the past The traumas of the past stop them from believing God for their future miracles, for their future blessings. They think they're never going to be happy again because of what happened in the past. Now they're scarred. Now they're, they're marked by something that happened in the past, and they cannot believe God for something greater. Do not let your past experiences make you stop, make you stop believing God for your future blessings. Tell your neighbor, turn to your neighbor now and say, he's talking to you right now. Verse 19 says this, see, see, I am doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. You see how Solomon was wrong? Because this is God himself talking to us through the prophet. Solomon said, there's nothing new. God said, can you see that I'm doing something new? 
You see, the problem is that it's not that God is not doing something new. The problem is that we don't have our spiritual eyes open to see what God is doing. Because he's asking, can you see? He's asking, can you see what I'm doing? A lot of people think that God speaks to everybody but to them. God blesses everybody but them. It's not. It's because you're so focused on the circumstances and, and the negative things on your own, uh, in your own life that you don't stop to open your spiritual eyes and see what God is doing in your life. Verse 19, he says, see, I'm doing a new thing. He says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Again, he said, you, you, you can't notice. You, not, you cannot perceive it that I'm doing something new. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is doing something new, church. God is doing something new right now. God is doing something new in America in the midst of this whole thing going on. God is doing something new in the world. God is doing something new in my life. God is doing something new in your life. The question is, can you open your eyes and see what God is doing? He says, now it springs up. He said, it's not going to. He said, it springs up now. It springs up now. God is, God is not telling you to see with your natural eyes. He's telling you to see with your spiritual eyes, with the eyes of faith. Come on, somebody. Hmm. It's all about not taking your eyes off the word to see what God is doing. It's all about not taking your eyes off the word. It's all about not taking your eyes off the word. It's all about not taking your eyes off the word. Say this with me. God is about to do something new in my life. Look what Jesus said in Luke. Luke chapter 5. Look what Jesus said. Verse 36 from the NIV says this. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment. And the patch from the new will not match the old. 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 That's why you cannot bring with you the junk from the past. Because the junk from the past, it's not good enough for the new. Oh, I wish I was. Did I miss a hotel this morning? Did I came to the wrong church? Come on, talk to me a little bit. That's why you have to leave behind what's in the past. What is the past, Pastor? Five minutes ago. What is the past, Pastor? What happened yesterday? What happened three months ago? What happened six months? Because the, the junk of the old is not good for the new. It will not match. Verse 37, and no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wine skins. Into new wine skins. New life. New mindset. New season. New life. New mindset. New season. New life. New mindset. New season. You cannot have the new life in Christ with the same old habits. The same old lifestyle. You cannot expect to get out of this quarantine and get into this new season. This week is the final week of spring. We're going to get into the summer. You cannot get into the new into the new season doing the same thing, carrying the same things of the season. Imagine, watch. Imagine if we wore the same jackets we wore in the winter and the summer. You can. When things change, when seasons change, you have to change some things. You have to change what you wear. You have to even change what you eat. There's some foods that are not good in the summer. 
There's some other foods that are good in the winter. Come on, talk to me a little bit. Right? Sometimes you don't want to eat a soup in 100 degrees weather outside. Come on, give me a salad. Because I don't want to sweat more. Give me some sushi. Something cold. Right? Sometimes when it's 20 degrees negative outside, you don't want to drink an iced coffee. You want a nice tea. You want a hot coffee. Give me something hot. You see, there's things that you have to do and change according to the season. According to the season. I want you to see this. You have to renew your mind. You have to renew your mind. What Jesus was saying here, it it was about renewing the mind. In other words, you cannot get a new revelation with the same old thinking. You have to change your mind so you can receive something new. So you can understand something new. And renew your jo- renewing your mind, it's your job to do. Renewing your, your mind, it's our, renewing our mind is our job to do. Sometimes we want God to do everything for us. We want to act like little babies. We want a God to do everything. And there are some things that it's not God's responsibility. It's our responsibility. I see songs that are that are played in the radio. I see people singing in churches all the time. Give me a new heart. Give me, you know, give me a clean heart. No, God is not going to give you a clean heart. It's your job to clean your heart. It's your job not to allow junk to get into your heart. Come on, talk to me a little bit. It's your job to protect your heart. He said, guard your heart. Because out of it will flow the issues of life. See, now we ask God to do something where he, that he told us to do. It's his job. You can now ask the Holy Spirit to help you to do things that you cannot do in the natural. Help me. It's a different story than say, do it for me. Come on. And Jesus is telling us, renew your mind so you can receive the new. Because the same old thinking, it's not good enough for a new revelation, for a new wine, for a new joy. Are you with me? Say amen. Amen. Okay. So now, I want to show you something different. Open your Bible with me in Romans chapter 8 now. Verse 32. If you're getting anything so far, say amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. From the message translation, says this. So... What do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? Come on, somebody. You just missed an opportunity to say amen. I'm going to give you another one. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God on your side like this, how can you lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? If God embraced us, our condition, the way we were without without being afraid of exposing himself, his holiness, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? Is there anything else? Listen to this. I just showed you that there is nothing that God won't do for us. Do you believe that? There's nothing that God won't do for you. Because if he gave you his son, come on, that was his best. Is there anything else he wouldn't do? That's what what Paul is saying. How many of you believe that? Say amen. Amen. But again, God will not do what's your job to do. Is there anything God won't do? Yes. There's nothing that God won't do. But God will not do your job. You know why? Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, 9. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. You write this down and you can check later. He says, we are God's co-workers. He said, I made you my partner. I made you 
my partner. In other words, I made you to work together with me, not for me to work for you. Every partnership, each one has its roles. You take care of the finances, I'll take care of the employees, publishing. You take care of the books, I'll take care of whatever else. See, you change because then it's more efficient. If we don't separate, we're going we're gonna to repeat or end up wasting our energy doing the same thing twice. And then we're not going to be effective. And then we're not going to be effective because we don't separate what's your responsibility, what's my responsibility. And God, and throughout the world, you're going to see many times that God made us to be his co-worker. His partner in the kingdom. Jesus so much so said in Matthew. He said in Matthew, he said, come and learn from me. Work with me. Let me show you how I do it. See, he wants us to work with him. So if, if, if God can, he will do anything for us. Anything. He will give you anything that you cannot perform yourself. But anything that's your responsibility to do, don't expect God to do it for you. I just gave you an example. Don't expect God to renew your mind. You renew your mind. Don't expect God to clean your heart. You get your heart clean. Don't expect, don't expect God to clean up your mind from all the junk of this world. You protect your mind. You protect your mind from from negativity, from these ugly things, things that people say, things that people that people show you, people, things that people do to you. You protect yourself. God wants us to be co-workers with him, even in our own personal miracles. Talk to me a little bit. I know that some people right now are probably going like, what is he doing? Where, where is he going? Stick with me. You will see. God wants us to be his partner. God wants us to be his co-worker. When I, when, I, when I do my job as a pastor and I allow the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit, we can be more effective in the church. How can, what do you mean, pastor? Well, there's a lot of pastors today that like to play Holy Spirit, controlling people's lives, telling them what to do, what not to do, judging people, condemning people. That's not my job. My job is to teach the word of God. It's to love people unconditional and let the Holy Spirit teach them. Let the Holy Spirit transform their lives. I'm not here to control nobody. I'm here to teach the word, people, love on people unconditionally. The rest is between you and the Holy Spirit. And there are a lot of people trying to do the Holy Spirit's job. Controlling people, manipulating people. I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit does that. But I'm saying when you're doing what you're not supposed to do, you're going to do this kind of thing. You're going to start manipulating people because that's not your job. You're never made to convict anybody, to judge anybody, to put anybody in hell or in heaven. You are, you are told to preach the gospel without compromising the word of God and loving on people unconditionally. Who's going to save them is God, is Jesus, is the Holy Spirit himself. Come on, talk to me a little bit. I want to show you something. Look what Jesus did. Let me show you what I just told you in the scripture. Let me prove it to you now. John chapter 11 verse 32 says this. The NIV. Very, very well known story. Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb. It was, it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Verse 39. Take away the stone. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, his sister, his sister, the sister of the dead man. The sister of the dead man. The sister of the dead man. By this time, there is a bad order. For he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Verse 41, so they took away the stone. So they took away the stone. Who took away the stone? They did. They did. So they took away the stone. Jesus 
Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. Who came out? The dead man. The dead man came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with stripes, strips of linen, and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Take off the grave clothes and let him go. I want you to see this. Two things I want to show you here. Number one, Jesus said, remove the stone. Remove the stone. Number two, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Think with me now. Don't you think that Jesus being all powerful, Jesus being 100% man, 100% God, he had all the power to do the whole miracle without having to involve anybody else? In other words, if he has the power to call a dead man out that's been dead for four days, don't you think he had the power to say to the stone, remove Lazarus, come out. Grave clothes, out. <laughs> Don't you think he had that power? But Jesus was saying, the things that, I, that you can do, you do it. The things that you cannot do, I'm going to do it for you. You see how God always wants us involved, working with him, even in our own miracles. In our own miracles. He said, remove the stone. None of you here have the power to resurrect him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be dead. But all of you, if you get together, you can remove the stone. What you can do in the natural, you do it. What you cannot do, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. And then when he's out, Jesus said, now take off his grave clothes. Take off his grave clothes. You see, now Jesus again get him involved. Get them involved in a miracle. And this is what I want you to see here today. That God will do anything that you cannot do, but God is expecting from you to do things that he already gave you the power, gave you the power, the authority, and the ability to do it. Amen. Talk to me a little bit. Amen. Let me give you now the title of this message. The title of this message is, Dead in the World of the Living. Dead in the world of the living. Or you can say, like my wife said to me when I was sharing this, this title to her, with her, she said, maybe the walking dead. <laughs> <laughs> in order for Lazarus to live as a normal person, get this. In order for Lazarus to live as a normal person in this world, he had to remove his grave clothes. Come on, somebody. Amen. You, can, you, can, you can live in a season... Carrying the badge or the bandages of the past. You can live in a season carrying the bandages, looking like a mummy. Imagine if Lazarus was resurrected from the dead and now he's walking around like a mummy. Imagine, like Thriller. <laughs> Imagine if it was that way. So when Jesus told him, come out to your new life. You don't need this clothes anymore. You don't need this grave clothes because that's not where you live. So I have seen that a lot of people are living in a new season carrying the bandage of the past. And God didn't call you to live like a mummy. God, you call, God called you to live like a free person in this new season without the old habits, without the old mindset, without, without being a dead because that's not where you are anymore. That's not where you are anymore. Tell your neighbor this. Take off your, take off your grave clothes. Halloween is over. Are you with me? The grave clothes means to live behind the old you. Your bad experiences, your ugly past, anything that tries to tell you you can't. Anything that tries to tell you what are you doing? 
You're supposed to be dead. Go back inside that grave. Stop praying for your miracle. Stop believing for your miracle. Your dreams are dead. Stop, stop dreaming and give up. Your grave clothes means anything that tries to hold you back to the old you. And Jesus said, take off the grave clothes. Take off and let him go. Let him go. Leave the old behind. You cannot live the new life carrying the bandages of the past. You have to dig your heels and look that devil, that lying devil in the face and said, no devil. If Jesus called me out, nobody's going to bring me back in. If Jesus already resurrected me, nobody's going to call me dead. It's so amazing that the Bible says, the writer says that the dead man walked out. How can a dead man walk out? If he walked out, he's no longer dead. But people love to put labels on people. No, no, he's the dead man. No, he's not the dead man. He's Lazarus. He's the living Lazarus. Oh, she's the, oh, she's the, the troublemaker. He's a drug addict. He's, the, he's this, he's that. The people always love to put labels on you. That's what the devil likes to do. He likes to put, put labels on you so he can limit you, so he can put a bar and say, this is only how far you're going to go. And I have learned something in my life. Nobody's going to put a bar over my head and say, this is how much you're going to grow. This is only how far you can go. I'm not going to let anybody do that. You know why? Because I became the bar myself. I'm going to go as far as God tells me I can. I'm going to go as high as God allows me to go because there's always a new level. There's always something new because God said, can you see? Can you open your eyes? Can you perceive that I'm doing something new and it's happening right now? Come on, somebody. Talk to me a little bit. Don't let anybody limit you. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anybody tell you that this year is over. Don't let anybody tell you that was a bad decision to open your own business. No, 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 no. Is it, 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 it was God who told you this or was somebody else? So don't listen to them. Trust God. Believe God. If he called you out, if he blessed you, if he give, gave you a promise, don't change what he told you because of what you have seen so far. Don't change. Don't change. I love what Pam wrote on her Facebook yesterday. She just told us that she got a new job. And somebody told her, said, oh, that kind of job you're looking for, it's in a victory box, by the way. It's, a, it's one of the testimonies for the victory box. Somebody told her, oh, this, job, this kind of job you're looking for, it's almost impossible to get it now. You know what she said? Not for me. And now she got the job. She started on Monday. You see? You see? It, that's how you have to do. When people tell you like, oh, no, this is not the season to buy houses. I know somebody that just bought a new house, a new house with four apartment, not even for him to live in as an investment. Come on, somebody. Don't allow people to tell you this is not the season because, God, now is the season. The Bible says in Psalm that he said the time to bless Zion is now. The time to show them favor, it's now. And do you think God didn't know what was going on in the future? The Bible says that he's the alpha, he's the omega, he's the beginning, and he's the end. So when God promised you something thousands of years ago, he already knew, he already knew what we were going to need in 2020. That's why he gave you his word in that defense. That's why he gave you a promise in that defense. That's why he gave you a savior in that defense that already blessed you, forgave you, past, present, and future. God is always ahead. God is always ahead. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me close this now. Whew. Sometimes... And this is kind of tough to say, because especially when we, we faith people, we have a hard time saying some things that doesn't sound very faith, doesn't sound like faith. But unfortunately, it's a reality in this world. Sometimes we go through things in life that you have no control of. Talk to me. Sometimes some things happen that you have no control of. Death of a loved one, sometimes it's inevitable. You're caught by surprise, and what do you do now? Sometimes we go through life, we, and some things that we face, we don't have an answer for it. And that's why we have to do what Jesus said. Believe God. 
That's why we got to keep on saying. And even though some of, these, some of these things are not even faith, are not faith. But we go back to faith. Even though I don't have an answer, I still believe God. When I don't see God's hands, God's hands working on my behalf, I trust his character. I trust his heart. Just because I don't see something happening, it doesn't mean it's not happening. Sometimes when I'm driving, I go through a storm. I cannot see in the natural that the sun is on the other side of the storm. But I know it's there. So I don't stop my car and go cry under the seat. I keep on driving. I keep on driving. Because I know it's going to get better. I keep on trusting and believing that the rain, the storm will stop. And the sun is right ahead. Some things are inevitable, uncontrolled. And like I said, death is also inevitable and uncontrolled. If Jesus doesn't come back soon enough, we're all going to die one day. Amen? And death can represent numerous things. Numerous things. Death can represent your life. Death can represent dreams, life, dreams, relationship, jobs, seasons, businesses, even ministry. There's many other things, many other examples that we can use. And you say that season is dead, that season is over, that relationship is dead and barren. Whatever thing you can use as an example and call dead. But I have learned something. If you go through something like this. This changed my life 10 years ago. What I'm going to tell you. I have learned that it's your decision. It's your decision to continue life as a mummy. It's your decision to, con to continue life as a dead person. Or a zombie. With your grave clothes on or shake that junk off and go live your new future again. Amen. It's your decision. It's your decision how long you're going to suffer. Yeah. This is tough for some people. And some people don't like to hear that. You know why? Because they want people to feel bad for them their whole life. Yeah. They want somebody to feel, to feel pity for them. It's your decision how long you're going to mourn, how long you're going to suffer, how long you're going to allow that situation control you. I was going through something tough in my life about 10 years ago. And something that uh, it was a repetition of something that had happened in the past. It was a repetition of something that had happened in the past. And I was so broken at work and crying, literally crying about it. And this person came to me and said, it's your decision how long you're going to cry about the situation. And I, want, I got mad at first. I got mad at first because we want people to understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. We hear this all the time. When, but you don't understand. I don't have to understand everything to be sympathetic. I don't have to jump off a building to understand that if you do that, you'll die. Come on, so talk to me a little bit. Not everything is based on natural experience so you could understand. We know if somebody jumps in front of a truck, they're going to die. We don't need to do that to understand what they did. Come on, somebody, talk to me. But in life, when we're going through something bad, we want people to understand and feel sympathetic. Feel bad for us. Because misery loves company. But I have learned in my life that it's your decision to say enough is enough. I'm not going to allow this person, the situation, the season, the economy, what's going on in the world to control my decisions, to control my joy, to control my life, to control my peace, to control my relationship with God. Talk to me a little bit. We can see this so powerfully in 2 Samuel. We're not going to read. I'm just going to show you this. You can read later the details in chapter 12. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, we see the story of David and Bathsheba. And there is a lesson for all of us in this story. We know that the first son that they had in that relationship died. 
He was sick and eventually he died. He died. But before he died, David fasted for, for days and nights, lying in sackcloth on the ground. He wouldn't eat. He wouldn't shower. He wouldn't shave. He wouldn't do anything. Laying down in a dark room, don't bother me. Praying, believing God that the kid wouldn't die. David refused to eat. He wouldn't get out of that situation until he found out that the baby was already dead. When he found out that the baby was already dead, you know what he did? He got up. He took a shower. He put new clothes on. He asked for food. He went to church to worship God. And he moved on with his life. And he moved on, moved on with his life. And everybody surrounding David went crazy. You know why? Because they thought if when the kid was only sick, he was acting that way, how he's going to act now that the kid is dead? He's going to go crazy now. Nobody could understand his behavior that he got up and he lived life normally. Ate, drank, showered, shaved, went to church. To worship God and moved on with his life. But this is what David said. That it's very powerful. Verse 22 he says this. While the child was still alive. I fasted and wept. I thought. Who knows. The Lord may be gracious to me. And let the child live. But now that he's dead. Why should I go on fasting? Why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back? No. No. I will go to him, but he will not return to me. I will go to him. He said, I will see him again one day in the glory. And this is something that I want to say to every mother, every person watching me under the sound of my voice that probably lost somebody. And they're still, they're still broken and destroyed. Let me tell you something. It's not over. You can say like David. They're not going to come back, but I'm going to go to him. I'm going to go to them. I'm going to meet them again in the much better place. But what I wanted to show you here is this. While the kid was still alive but sick, he prayed, he fasted, he, he, he stayed alone. He did everything that he thought he needed to do in order to bring the kid back. He couldn't do that in the natural. It didn't happen. And then he decided, I'm not suffering anymore. It's over. I'm going to move on with my life. I'm going to move on with our life. And be careful with people because everybody was trying to protect them and say, no, you're reacting way too, you're re re reacting normal way too fast. People sometimes want to do that to you. No, 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 keep on crying more. No, keep on feeling bad more. No, keep on, no, poor you. This what happened to you was so bad. Get away from me. Let me move on with my life. Let me continue. The person is dead. I'm not dead. I shouldn't live like a, like, a, like a mummy carrying my grave clothes. I'm not dead. One day we're going to meet again, even though it's painful in the natural right now. But you make a decision how long you want to suffer. You make a decision how long you're going to walk as a dead man, as a dead woman. And look what happened right after that. Let me tell you this. Watch what happened right after that situation. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that after that, David took Bathsheba again, made love to her, and they had Solomon. The Bible tells in that same story that he got up, ate, went to church, praised God, took his wife, made love to her, she got pregnant again. And they had now Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived after Jesus. You see? But imagine if David would continue to pray about it. He said, I don't want to do anything. This, um, you know, this is not right. He moved on. He said, I know how to make babies again. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Factory's not over. Not me. We didn't go bankrupt. Factory's still working. Let's make more babies. If you know what I'm talking about. And this is what I want you to know. If David stayed behind... He didn't take his grave clothes on. He didn't move on with his life. We wouldn't probably have Solomon today to teach us great things. You make a decision. There's a lot of people. 
There's a lot of dead people walking on the earth in the world of the living. They look alive because they can talk. They can smile sometimes. But they're dead on the inside. They, 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 you look at them, it seems like everything is good and normal. But they're broken on the inside. But God brought me here this morning to tell you, it's time to take off the grave clothes and live your life again. And live your life again. This is not over. The year is not over. Your life is not over. What happened to you, it's not greater than God's favor. It's not greater than God's love. Sometimes your greatest victory is going to come after your greatest loss. Sometimes your greatest victory comes after your greatest loss. Stand with me. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said this in John chapter 12, verse 24. He said, I'll tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. What Jesus was telling us, for some things to be fruitful in your life, some other things are going to have to die. For some things to produce a major fruit, eternal fruit in your life, some things will have to die. That's what Jesus is saying. So don't be scared. Don't be scared. Because if something died in your life, a job, a relationship, friendship, whatever it is, an opportunity, something died in your life, something new is about to be born again. Something new is about to be born again. Again, can you see? Can you see? The Bible is so amazing. Because the Bible shows us that for Joshua to lead, Moses had to die. For Elisha to receive double portion, Elijah had to leave the scene. For Solomon to become king, David had to die. For grace to come to us, the Lord had to die. For you and I to be here today, for the church to be born, Jesus had to die. Jesus had to die. So don't be afraid because something new is being birthed again. Something new is being birthed again. You have a song? You have a song? I don't know what you're singing. Jesus Christ. Trust in Jesus' name. Sing it like this. Christ alone. Corner. Hallelujah. The weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord of all. Hallelujah. Come on, lift it up. Let's sing one more time all together. And Christ alone. The weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of us. Hallelujah. I want to pray for everybody that right now feels like that they need to shake off and get rid of the grave clothes that probably they didn't even realize they were carrying. But this message brought some memories to you and you know. And you know. 
If you're here tonight, we're going to close this now, but I feel strongly in my heart that I need to pray. If that's you, I want you to get out of your seat and run up here. Get out of your seat and run up here. And we're going to pray for you. And just believe. You know what? Stay there. It's better. Stay there. Put your hands up all over this room. Put your hands up. I want to invite my wife to come here. Honey, get your mic and pray with us. I want you to pray. You know, you know in the natural who wants to suffer a major loss. <laughs> and look at you and how strong you're standing. Because we made a decision, you made a decision. I want you to stretch your faith right now and release the anointing over everybody under the sound of our voices. If you're watching us, stretch your hand wherever you are. Please stand with us wherever you are. Stretch your hand and receive tonight in Jesus' name. This is, this this morning. is about everything dead in your life. The new business ideas. <laughs> the new ministry aspirations. Thank you, Jesus. Christ alone. He's the cornerstone. Cornerstone. Weak made strong. The weak made strong. And the Savior's love through the storm. You He is Lord. Lord of all. It really is a new season. And what I heard while he, while pastor was preaching, you can't be in spring and summer at the same time. There's a transition from season to season. I hear this on the inside. There's a transition from season to season. But I'm the one who turns it around, says the Lord. Stop trying to make it happen. Stop trying to make it happen. See, spring becomes summer in a day. There, are transi there is transitioning happening that you don't see. You just have to walk the walk, says the Lord. You do your part. I'm always faithful to do mine, says the Lord. At least stop worrying about the businesses. Stop worrying. Yes, he gave you the idea, and he gave you the talent with the art. Little things become much in my hands, says the Lord. You don't have to make it happen. I'll make it happen. You do your part, says the Lord. The transition is, <laughs> I'm the transition. I make it happen. Come on, everybody, put your hands up. Father, I thank you. I thank you for new ideas, new homes, new locations for people. Everything people are standing for, Father. New businesses, new homes, new relationships, new, new places in, in, new positions in life. That's the word, new positions in life. Tony, I, I don't know what's in your heart, but the Lord does. <laughs> I don't know what's in your heart, but he knows. He put it there, and he'll bring it to pass. Just keep being faithful. Don't get weary in well-doing, says the Lord. Don't get weary in well-doing. I gave you those big shoulders, says the Lord. <laughs> you can carry it. You can carry the weight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jonathan, bigger. You have to dream bigger, says the Lord. You have to look up higher. You have to look up over the hills you see, says the Lord. There's more. <laughs> There's more nations. Don't get stuck in one nation, says the Lord. I'm a world God.
you know this, but you were made for more. There's so much inside of you, says the Lord. You're not on a shelf. Yes, I know you do this and that, and I know, I know my hand has always been on you, son, says the Lord. Don't quiet me on the inside. Don't quiet what I've already started, says the Lord. And don't try to figure it out. I'll open the way. I'll make the path straight, says the Lord. Your heart has always been turned toward me. And I don't forget. He has begun a good work in you, and he will complete it. And it won't be a burden, says the Lord. It won't be a burden to walk in the gift that I've placed in you greater than ever before. Just wholly lean on me, the God of all grace. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, put your hands up. Come on. Isn't it good to drink from the well in unison in this room? church you can do better than that hallelujah amen amen hallelujah praise you jesus we praise you jesus thank you lord he always exceeds our expectation he always goes above and beyond he's always about expanding and stretching us he's always about pouring out on us isn't it good to be poured out on isn't it good to be stretched? Sometimes our muscles get so tired and we just have to stretch a little bit. We do our part and he does his. He's faithful. Amen. And he doesn't even want us to do so much. Come on, what is it to roll a stone? Think about it. You don't have to raise the dead. You just have to move the stone. Come on. <laughs> you just have to believe in a good, good father. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. But 
everything he's promised us is already, it already is. It already is. I don't know about you today, but I'm blessed. Amen. I'm stretched. Amen. I'm inspired. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we just worship you. We thank you for this day. Amen. We thank you that the seed of the word of God is incorruptible. And it Praise will produce God. much fruit in each life today. Each life online and each life in the room. In Amen. Jesus' name. We honor you, Jesus. We don't forget that crucifixion that we believe in. Amen. You conquered death forever. The dead things in our lives will come alive again in Amen. Jesus' name. Thank you for this blessed week. We walk in favor according to your word. And we don't take it for granted. But we are proud to be your heirs. Join heirs. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. We're back here on Thursdays and then Sunday again. 7.30 on Tuesday nights we have prayer meeting. You can get all the information and participate in the prayer meeting every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. We love you. We bless you. Have a powerful week in Jesus' name. Expect favor. Expect blessings. Expect supernatural abundance over your life and your family. In Jesus' name, we love you, we bless, and we'll see you again. God bless. Bye-bye.